listening to Viral Podcasting, the place to go to learn how to generate a six-figure income or more from your podcast. To get the latest tips and information, go to viralpodcasting.com. And welcome to another episode of Viral Podcasting, which is the place to go, whether you're looking to build massive audiences, monetize your podcast and earn a six-figure income, or you just want to bring it all to another level. Well, June of 2020, you know, it's been an insane month without getting into all the uh, current events, which isn't the purpose of this show. But for me, uh, June 7th is a special day. That was the day that I became a full-time professional podcaster. And I gave up my day job, and I just started podcasting. My main show, The Financial Survival Network, done over 7,000 episodes. And I've produced a number of podcasts for other podcasters. I've got a few other shows out there. This show, I just started a new podcast uh, called Daily Market Wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. And you might want to take a look at it. It's up on YouTube. And you can find it on my main website, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Well, a lot has happened in the past nine years, and actually I've been podcasting for more than nine years. I'm really close to 10 years, but I didn't do it full time until June of 2011. So what exactly have I learned in the past nine plus years? Well, for one thing, it's a lot easier to become a professional podcaster than ever. It's easier and harder to actually turn it into your career, to make a living off of podcasting. But if you have the desire to do it and you have the acumen, the business acumen, and the ability to learn proper communication techniques, then you can very easily do it on your own by yourself. If you want to take it to another level, though, you really do need a coach. I have used uh, Valerie Geller from the beginning, from the moment I decided, hey, this is what I want to do with my life. And she is a top-notch radio consultant, communication consultant, specializing now more in podcasters, or as much in podcasters as with radio stations. She goes all over the world working with talk radio people, teaching them basic communication skills and how to build audiences, because that's what it's all about. You've got to build an audience. It doesn't matter whether your audience, your target audience, is several thousand people or in the millions. Podcasting really has come a long way. You all heard about Joe Rogan getting $100 million from Spotify. Whether that's a sound strategy or not, I don't know. I guess the people at Spotify, running a multi-billion dollar company, know what they're doing. I have my view. You have yours. But what it does do is put podcasting into the forefront. It really gives it a a platform. And for whatever Joe Rogan's reasons were, besides money for going to Spotify, God bless him. I wish him the best of luck. I wish it was me instead of him. I'm sure you wish it was you instead of him. He has a talent. He has mastered the medium. So we can learn a lot from Joe Rogan and the Joe Rogans of the world for certain But what I really want to get into is making the move. You decided there's basically nothing else you can do in the world, nothing else that gives you the satisfaction and nothing that that really fulfills you other than podcasting. And that's that's a great realization to come to. But it's also a painful one because, look, 5% of the podcasting population out there probably make 95% of the income and you've got to set your goals. You've got to have realistic goals. Getting that coach is essential. Of course I can coach you. I love coaching new podcasters, helping you to discover the techniques that I discovered that will help you build tens of thousands of audience members like I did, like I've done myself, or maybe you'll go to hundreds, thousands, millions Really, the sky is the limit in podcasting. But just because you can figure out how to run a mixing board, you can plug your microphone in, all these things, 
isn't necessarily going to get you there. You got to have a hook. You got to have an angle. Look, there's a million podcasts about entrepreneurship out there. There's only two or three of them that I personally know of that really have monetized successfully. Now, as podcasting becomes more mainstream and there are advertising platforms out there that are very effective, you have the ability to really up your income to make this a profession. But you've got to work on it. You've got to learn how to engage an audience and keep them. Now, of course, production values, and I've told you this before, are extremely, extremely important, but they aren't going to get people to actually come to your podcast to listen. You've got to have a hook. You've got to know your audience, your potential audience, and you've got to recognize your existing audience, why they're listening to you, and give them more of it. And as I go into in my book, and if you haven't got my book, you really should get the Kindle version. It's really cheap. It's called Viral Podcasting, a proven process to earn a six-figure income from your show. I've been doing this for years now. Hey, am I ready to retire? No, I haven't gotten Joe Rogan type money from it by any stretch, nor have I ever claimed to. But I will tell you that you can earn a living off of this. And the key is to learn the basic communication techniques, get get a mentor, a coach, air check. All right, I say this in the book. I've had a couple of shows on viral podcasting just dedicated to air checking. And air checking is where you have a third person, preferably somebody who's knowledgeable about radio or podcasting, listen to you with listen with you to one of your shows, you pick it out, and you go over what you did right and what you could have done better. We don't say wrong because it's critical, but its purpose, the purpose of an air check, is not to undermine your confidence. It's to build your confidence and to help you improve and bring it to the next level. It's easier said than done. Now, one of the things that I do, I've done from the beginning, is I've had a professional producer, almost from about the 100th or 200th episode, produce my shows and post them. Why do I do that? Quite simply, I'm not that good at it. I can run Audition. I've watched the scores of YouTubes. I use Adobe Audition for a lot of reasons we don't need to get into now, but point is, People are better at this than I am, and I want to devote the maximum of my efforts to to creating compelling content that will get you to listen, and and it's been effective. So I have Melissa. She's been in radio for over a decade. She knows how to produce shows better than I do. Another thing that I have her do is book guests. Now, you can do this by getting one of these scheduling programs that you simply send your prospective guest a link to. It's got the show times that you can arrange with that person that are available, blocked out on your calendar. They pick it, and then and then you schedule the show, and they get email reminders. It's really a great thing. It doesn't exactly work with the way that we run the show, but it is very effective, and I do recommend it. So that's one thing. I've been recording on Skype for many, many years. And Skype, it's the darndest thing. Quality-wise, it's probably the most consistent portal out there. But what I found with Skype, uh, it's got its limitations. It does have some inconsistencies. I started recently, I've done a bunch of Zoom presentations, webcasts on there. And Zoom, in terms of doing video, is definitely the best thing out there, especially with its enhanced green screen capabilities that it has now. But you can also use Ecamm, a lot of different ways to do this. Um, Getting back to Skype, Skype, if you're going to record video, isn't as good as Zoom. The nice thing about Zoom is that you can record all of it, the whole session, on your computer, and then you can take that put it into your video editing software. You can split the uh, audio track off of it 
and then work on that on Audition. What I prefer to do is record the entire webcast on Zoom, but also I record the audio on my my Rode Pro mixer. And so I have two copies of it at all times. That way, something happens, you've always got a backup. In any event, when you're going to make the decision, do you become a professional podcaster or not? Obviously, money is going to be first and foremost. If you're independently wealthy or you've got adequate income coming from other sources, not that big a deal. But if you don't, then you've got to create a path to monetization. And I go back to the old-fashioned business plan. I've talked about this on the show before, and I think it's something that you'll really find helpful to do. And you don't need to do a business plan like you're submitting it to a... a venture capitalist, because it's just not necessary. What I want you to do is create a list of expenses that you're going to incur, and you've got different types of expenses. You've got hard costs, you've got soft costs. Your hard costs are your microphone, your mixer, and all the miscellaneous stuff that goes along with that. If you've got uh, cameras, webcams, lighting, all these things. So you want your hard costs in there. And then you can pretty much figure out how long they're going to last. I would just break them down into a monthly cost. Divide your total hard cost by 36. That's a three-year recovery. Okay? Just to be conservative. Then, how many hours a month are you going to spend on your podcast? Right? If it's 100, then how much are you worth an hour? If you're worth $20 an hour, that's $2,000 per month that it's costing you in terms of opportunity cost. What you could get $20 an hour doing something else, having a job or whatever. If it's $100, fine. If you're an attorney, it's $500. Multiply the number of hours you spend per month times the hourly rate. And that is a cost. And you want that cost in there. And then, of course, you've got all your your podcast uh, portal, server, whether it's Libsyn, Blueberry, Spreaker, whatever. How much does that cost you a month? And you've got a bunch of other little ancillary, ancillary services, websites that you use. You might have YouTube Premium. I don't know. But you have probably half a dozen of them. Add those costs in. And then... You know, if you want to, if you're using your home office, you could add that in as a cost, what the rental would be on this or what you uh, deduct in terms of your, your income taxes. Uh, you, you know, there's all sorts of different formulas. You can talk to your accountant, add in all these costs. And then if it's $6,000 a month, then your break even point is $6,000 a month. Now understand you're not shelling out $6,000 a month, but your time opportunity cost plus all the other miscellaneous costs, you know, you could spend $1,000 a month in miscellaneous costs, uh, whether it's your web server, whatever. And now you know how much you got to make just to break even. And breaking even might be good enough because you've effectively got yourself a job. And then take that number your monthly cost, and divide it by the number of episodes you're going to do per month. If you're doing weekly podcasts, that's 4.3 episodes per month. So you divide 6,000 by 4.3, and you come out to roughly, you need to make $1,500 per episode, which sounds insurmountable. How am I ever going to do that? Well, let me tell you a little secret. If you've done your marketing and you know your path to monetization, it's a lot easier than you think. For instance, if you're a consultant, okay, and you are providing consulting services to professionals, one account might be enough to do it if you're a sales trainer. For instance, uh, so this is the add-on or force multiplier for your existing business. You're bricks and mortar, and you sell stuff. People will order stuff because they heard it on the podcast, all right? So it's a lot easier to get there than you think. Don't don't be put off by it. It might take you six months to get to that point. It took me a couple of years because initially I wasn't really 
obsessing over over monetization. I just wanted to do the show, wanted to build my skills as much as I could. You take all these things into consideration, and then you're ready to go. So you have to do some type of media packet. You can download them off the web. Just do media pack, media presentation, put it in a PDF. You can put it into a PowerPoint presentation, and then do a little research on your market, know your market, how, how big is your market, how many, how many people does it consist of, or businesses, all these things. You will be able to get that money and a lot more because this becomes your goal. Goal setting in podcasting is everything. Uh, my goal early on was to earn six figures from my podcast, and I managed to do that. It took four years to do it. Now I think it's a lot easier in many respects and a lot harder in other respects. There's advertising platforms out there. There are all sorts of ways of doing this. So don't be dissuaded and don't believe that it's impossible to achieve. You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to have the confidence and you've got to get up and do it every day or every week, whatever, whatever your schedule is, however many shows you're going to do consistency is the key. I'm talking about this on viral podcasting where I've been totally inconsistent at times, but consistency is the key. On Financial Survival Network, I cured that pro that problem basically by releasing two shows per day, automatically release them. I highly recommend you do auto release. Don't do manual posting of the shows because you will never be able to post them at the same time every day day or week. You'll just never do it. I I found for myself, I had to have a certain number of shows in the queue, and then it was really easy to do that. So consistency, and there's nothing here I'm not, I haven't told you before in other podcasts, but you have to do it. You can't just say, well, I'd like to be consistent and then not be consistent. No, you have to be consistent and you've got to do this regularly. Once you do it, you will It'll be easy once you get into the routine. I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to hear your stories, what you're thinking of podcasting about, what you're thinking that your podcast, what its goals are, and who you are. And just email me, kl at kerrylutz.com, kl at kerrylutz.com. So I'll tell you this. Initially, when you begin your podcasting quest, and it is a journey, You're learning to find your voice. And recently I realized I found my voice. I've had it for years, but I wasn't listening to my voice. Listening to your voice provides you the feedback necessary to become a real professional. And you have to do it for a while to know what I'm talking about. Don't forget the book, Viral Podcasting, a proven process to earn a six-figure income from your show. It's on Amazon. I've sold close to a 1,000 copies of it. It's self-published. I've never really promoted it. A couple of promotions here and there, a couple of book signings here and there. But it's been a great experience because it's put me into contact with so many of you. Check out the website, viralpodcasting.com. That's it for today. And we will be back, hopefully within a week, with more important advice on how to build your podcast audience and giving you a path to monetization. In another episode of Viral Podcasting. Be sure to visit us at viralpodcasting.com.